Horror Stories. Today, we are learning about oncologist Jane Cook Wright. An oncologist is a doctor who works with cancer patients. Jane was born in 1919 to a family full of famous doctors. In the 1940s, cancer was a very deadly disease with not a very high recovery rate. Thanks to Jane and her research, people with cancer today can fully recover and live long and happy lives. At age 33, Jane became head of the Cancer Research Center. She was nicknamed the mother of chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is a drug that we give cancer patients to help heal. In order to understand how this works, we have to understand human cells in the body. Let's dive in. Okay, this is a human body. Good job, body. We all have a body. And this is a house. A human body is made up of cells. The same way that this house is made up of bricks. When you have cancer, some of your cells or some of your bricks get sick. Chemotherapy is a drug that targets only the sick cells in your body or the bad bricks in the house and fixes them up. Jane did a lot of work in this area and saved many people. We still use chemotherapy today. Jane was also an African-American woman, which means she had many barriers to overcome. Back in the 1940s and 50s, only 6% of doctors were women. That's almost nothing. Now, about 38% of doctors are women and less than 15% of that is African-American or black women. We need to do way better than that. And we start here by engaging children in science at an early age. Wait, I think I actually know a doctor close to me. My dad's a doctor. I know Dr. Mario. Hey, I know. I have some questions for a doctor. Who should we ask? Dr. Pipet. Hi, Pipet. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great, Jenna. How are you? I'm doing great. Today, we are learning about oncologist Jane Cook Wright. <gasps> What an inspiration! She really Ooh. is. And you know who is also an inspiration? Who? You, Pipette! Oh! <laughs> you inspire me every single day. Oh, stop! You're making me blush! <laughs> and I know you're a doctor. Yes, I am. Very so, busy! A busy doctor? Of course, most doctors are extremely busy. That I do know. My mm -hmm. dad was a doctor and he was always very busy. Oh, yes, on his feet all the time. On his feet. Mm -hmm. But, Pipette, mm -hmm. what kind of doctor are you? Oh, well, I've dabbled in everything. In everything? Yes, I'm so curious about the human body. Well, what does it really take to be a doctor and... How many kinds of doctors are there? Should we sing about it? Yes, we should. What kind of doctors are there out there? More than 24. What kind of work do they do? Oh, all kinds. Each doctor has an area of work. They specialize. Would you be able to tell me some? What kind of doctor puts you to sleep? Anesthesiologist. What kind of doctor takes care of your feet? Oh, podiatrist. You know a lot about doctor's pipes. Let's list some more there. Names in their types. We got hematology, that's your blood. Immunology, that's allergies. Dermatology, that's your skin. Radiology, they take x-rays. Neurology, nervous system. Gynecology, there's lots of ology. Ophthalmology, that's your eyes. Psychiatry, well, that's your mind. Pathology, disease. Pediatrics, children. Urology, that's your pee. Oncology, that's Jane Cook Wright. She's the doctor we study today. Tonight. Being a doctor was my lifelong dream Ever since I was stitched at the seams Some people think that I'm just full of fluff Being a puppet and a doctor is tough 
What kind of doctors are there out there? You know this. What kind of work do they do? Oh, you remember, right? Each doctor has an area of work. Exactly, yes. What kind of doctor are you? Pipette. Me? Yeah. Oh, I'll never tell. Wow, I didn't know there were so many routes to becoming a doctor. Really, what does it take? Well, in Jane's time, it was a little bit different. In 1942, Jane completed a degree in the arts. Then with some pushing from her father, she applied for a pre-medical degree and did that schooling for three years and then an internship. After that, she specialized in oncology and became a full doctor. These days, it's a little different. I'll draw a roadmap for you of how to become a doctor today. Well, you're not going to become a doctor today. It's going to take a little more time than that. If you want to become a doctor, here's the roadmap of how to do it. First, work hard in school. Anything you like to study, study that. Do you like art? Do you like physics? Do you like math? Run with it. Number two, find your passion. Passion is something you love to do or really, really enjoy. Find what that is and keep doing that. Number three, in high school, take science classes like physics, biology, chemistry, and math. Number four, in university, study your passion. If your passion is biology, take all the biology classes or all the astronomy classes or all the English late 19th century history classes. Number five, study this area for four years. Specifically for medical school, you could do anatomy or biology or chemistry, anything like that. But you just need a four year degree. After that, you can have your good marks and use those to apply to medical school. Your marks are important. That's why it's important to work hard in your previous years. But don't worry, if your marks aren't that good, you can upgrade some classes and try again. Sometimes it takes more than one try, and that's okay. After you apply to medical school, you get into medical school, and then you complete medical school. That's a four-year program where you kind of learn the general things of medical school, the things every doctor needs to know. And after that, you specialize. This can take many years depending on what you want to specialize in. Jane specialized in oncology. My dad specialized in anesthesiology. It's whatever is your passion and that interests you that you should specialize him. Hey, we should take a second to talk about passion because that's really the most important thing here. Should everyone become a doctor? No, you should only become a doctor if it's really your passion. What's a passion? Well, I have my convenient Oxford English Dictionary here, or some people like to call it the OED. So to use a dictionary, we find the letter P, A, S, S, O, N, and then we go down through the letters. You know, I had it, but here it is. So we scroll passage, passageway, passbook, pass card, passenger, pigeon. Here we go. Passion, strong, barely controllable emotion. Well, what does that mean? If you tuned in last week, we talked about emotions. Those are, those are the things we feel. But in simple terms, passion is something you love, something that makes you happy or excited. Jane had a lot of passions. Yeah, she was passionate about being a doctor, but she was also passionate about watercolor and painting and sailing and she also loved to garden. What's my passion? Well, I love science and I love art and I love sports and I love animals. I also enjoy to read and to drink cups of tea. You can have endless passions. What are some of yours? Do you like gardening? Do you like playing with your toys? Do you like hanging out with your friends? Do you like writing or reading? Whatever your passion is, you should hold on to it and do it as much as you can, as many ways as you can. Take two passions and put them together. 
Like this video, it's science and art, two of my favorite things. Jane used her passions and that helped her be an amazing doctor. I use my passions so I can teach you about other people's passions. Huh, so many passions. You know what, this is inspiring me. I think I'm going to use my passion for writing and write a poem about passion. wrote that poem in about 30 seconds. Would you like me to share? Okay. <clears throat> it's called The Passion Poem. And I promise I actually just wrote this just now. Passion. I love to fly my kite. I love to ride my bike. So I tied my kite to my bike and made a passion machine. Will my kite bike take me to the moon? I will find out soon. I pedal and fly, heart as light as wind, my passion machine. I fly it to the moon where gravity makes a fool of me. <laughs> you know what? I feel on a roll. Let's head over to Funny Bones for some laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> Yours truly, Buddy Bones. I got some good ha ha's for you today. <clears throat> Did you hear about the guy who lost his whole left side? He's all right now. <laughs> when does a doctor get mad? When he runs out of patience. <laughs> hey, doctor. I keep hearing a ringing sound. Then answer the phone. Ha! Why did the library book go to the doctor? To get checked out. Ha! Did you hear about the little girl who swallowed those quarters? No change yet. Ha! Thanks for hanging around today and learning about Jane Cook, right? And a lot about being a doctor in passions. If you have a passion, I challenge you to write a poem about it. If writing isn't your passion, that's okay. Maybe try drawing a picture or moving your body in a dance piece. I really encourage you to explore your passion just like Jane did. We can accomplish amazing things when we do what we love. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you next week. Bye!